Uh, may I now request the second speaker, Professor uh, Jaydeep Talukdar, Talukdar, kind to deliver his talk. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. I thank the members on the dais and all the students and everyone else present here. Um, I'll just tell a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm in a fairly unique position to be able to judge the national education policy because I was 30 years in the U.S. From 83 to 2012, I was in the U.S. and then from 2000 till date, I'm in Odisha. So I've seen the education system in both countries, and there are positives and negatives. I'll just take a few moments to highlight some of the positives. I'm uh, hugely in favor of the new education policy. I think it is a, a radical reform which was well needed because uh, we were stagnating in a system which is archaic and about 100 years old. So um, one of the things about this new um, education policy is something called the higher educational institutions, three categories, and it explicitly states that um, the affiliating university system has to be done away with. And in the U.S., there are no affiliating universities. They're all autonomous. They're all independent. So wherever you go, they call them schools. Every school is unique, and it's, um, it offers excellent quality education. Every school or every university has a complete blend of science, arts, humanities, engineering. So that is the mode of operandi which we should adopt. And the new education policy states clearly that uh, Every institution should have both science, arts, and be autonomous. So as uh, one of the earlier speakers was saying, there, there will be three classes of institutes, research institutions, educational uh, or research universities, uh, academic universities, and autonomous colleges. And each of these colleges should have a, a blended mixture of science, arts, humanities. You cannot just have an engineering college. So, Hopefully these things will pan out. It will take time because these reforms are radical. But it's, uh, it's uh, much appreciated and hopefully it can be implemented uh, in a reasonable period of time. Uh, so this learning mechanism, it should be learner-centric. And the new education policy does talk about learner-centric education and something called vocational hands-on. Hands-on education is important because that experiential learning, if you do something with your hands, you pretty much never forget. Uh, I was in a position there in the U.S. where I had to work on my own car, and then I got involved with a mechanic who showed me so I can disassemble and put together a car together. So uh, that skill I will never forget. So if you do something uh, by hand and you experience it, that is a learning mechanism apart from classroom teaching which will which ingrains in you, and it really is, uh, is a deeper learning mechanism. So at Silicon, we are adopting something like that. We call it practice school. After the internship, there are three mandatory internships after the first year, second year, and third year. We have a six-month program, optional, where a student can go to an uh, institution or, a, or an organization uh, where they can actually uh, get a paid internship. They can get paid for learning on the job. So we are uh, trying to incorporate some aspects of the new education policy in our, in our educational system. One other thing I have to mention, this exam business. Our, our exam system also needs to change because we pay an overwhelming importance to some midterm or a final exam as opposed to continuous evaluation. How well you do. I went to IIT Kharagpur because I did well in one exam. But that really shouldn't be. Uh, I think that we should emphasize or uh, reorient ourselves towards a continuous evaluation process that, uh, that makes uh, attainment and evaluation more meaningful other than just appearing for a final exam or an end-term exam. So that also really, that aspect needs to be looked into. Third thing I'll talk about is creativity. The new education policy talks about being creative, but our system is so regimented and so uh, it's, uh, it's one track. We have this 
pretty rigid curriculum. You have to take so, so many courses in um, uh, basic sciences, so many courses in engineering sciences, there's that. No, you have to allow latitude. You have to allow uh, some independence in what the student chooses and uh, what is taught. So unless you do that, you cannot really uh, make creative thinkers. I mean, I'm not trying to be negative, but true creativity, we, are, we have the potential. Indians, in my opinion, have incredible intellect and potential, but we are not living up to it. Primarily, in my opinion, is because of the uh, regimented system. The system's got to open up because then only will true creation come. Um, just a brief word about this pandemic, which is not really part of this forum, but I'll just say uh, some of the pitfalls we have encountered. This online learning is good, but it really cannot substitute, in my opinion, face-to-face -face learning. Um, because learning, there, there are several aspects to it. One is when you learn from what, what a teacher is saying, your mode of absorption as a student is different when you're in a classroom. Also, uh, I am able to gauge as a teacher whether the student has learned or not by looking at the the student and seeing whether the person has learned or not. I have one look and I can tell if, the, if it's an involved concept I'm presenting is going through or not. That mechanism is absent in this online. I cannot gauge. I mean, whether the students are there or not, I cannot tell. That's one thing. Another thing is this, somebody else talked about it, this peer learning. When you're in a classroom setting, if there was a difficult concept, uh, students talk amongst themselves and somebody got the concept, they'll explain it to others. That whole mechanism was absent in this online business. That is important. That's how we learned also, I remember. If it was a difficult concept that we would talk to people, somebody, we would discuss amongst ourselves. That is a key mechanism. And lastly, of course, the exams. This, I talk to people, I'm well connected with folks in the US, and uh, this online exam, proctoring the exam was just a miserable failure. We just couldn't do it. And no matter where you are and everyone uh, pretty much is the same. What, whatever you do, there are people, the students are pretty, uh, innovative that way. They have figured out a way of ways and mechanisms of collaborating. So the online uh, examination system really didn't work well. But anyway, it's a, it's a learning experience. And uh, one good thing is with any online event, whether it be a classroom, an FDB, whatever it is, you can, uh, you can reach out to a very wide audience and uh, involve people from around the world to participate. So that part is good. So in a nutshell, I would say that uh, this new education policy is exceptionally good, calls for radical reforms, and hopefully we can implement it sooner than later. Thank you.